No progress. With us now, live from Kiev, is Mr. Mustafa Anayem, Deputy Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine. Thank you very much for talking to us, sir. Thank you for inviting me. First of all, now, uh, after everything that happened, how is the infrastructure of um, uh, Ukraine after all these bombings? First of all, I would say that <clears throat> Ukraine is now doing well. I mean, all our structures, all our bodies are working united, and uh, we are trying now to avoid all our catastrophes, humanitarian issues. And uh, what about infrastructure? Of course, many chains, of supply chains of food uh, was broken in the last two weeks. But for now, we, are, we can say that we uh, re-established many links with the big cities. Uh, railroads and rail railways works very well. Of course, we have a big problem with the transportation because many people are now trying to leave country and they are uh, moving from west side to east side. But from the other side, we have many partners. And what I can say is that private business and uh, uh, people around us are helping government, helping each other. So we feel that the unity of our country, of those who are now working on the streets, who are now working on the checkpoints, and also, of course, those who are working on the roads. So for now, we understand that we still have possibility to deliver uh, food, to deliver medicines, and of course, to deliver our weapon to our soldiers who are now fighting on the front line. But of course, we feel all these problems we have, we will have after war, because more than 22 hospitals was destroyed, many schools, 100, uh, 1,100 uh, um, residential areas was destroyed and demolished, so it's not something to shelled. Shelled, I think, more than 10,000 buildings was shelled, but we are talking about those who was demolished. 900 uh, villages and cities left without electricity. And I'm not talking about harbors, which was closed and many of them were destroyed. All our airports, mostly all of them, were attacked. Uh, I'm talking about more than 100 bridges which was destroyed and thousands of kilometers of roads which was rebuilt last year, but now they are destroyed and we feel these problems when we are talking about delivering some food. So for this moment, we are doing well, but we feel that the, the, the damage is very big. And we feel that after war, we need a lot of resources and support to, to rebuild it all issues. Yeah. What about the nuclear plants? Are they safe? <laughs> You know that the, for Russians it is not something they are not they know, making difference. Is it hospital or is it a nuclear plant? Unfortunately, they attacked two of them. It's I mean about Zaporizhia, uh, which is one of the biggest in Europe, and of course they attacked Chernobyl. I think this name unfortunately is very famous in the world, but they attacked even Chernobyl. We now we are not not controlling Chernobyl, and we don't have information. You know that many people and many experts are concerned about that. So uh, for this moment, they are safe, we think so. Uh, those plants which are controlled by Ukrainian government are totally safe. Uh, Sometimes we feel that uh, we, we, we see that they are attacking these plants. For example, Zaporizhia plant was attacked last week and uh, it was, you know, very tiny balance between explosion and, and because they attacked directly uh, the plant. So for this moment, uh, it is still threatened and it's still in you know, a danger moment when any moment they can attack because, again, I will repeat, they're not making just a difference between school residential areas or is nuclear plant. So just to understand better uh, what you're saying, is there still food and water enough for people, those who stayed in Ukraine? When you say enough, yes, enough to survive. But of course, it's not, not enough to, 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 to live quality, good quality of life. But 
for some cities, for those rural uh, neighborhoods which are um, controlled by Russians or those who are cut it from Ukrainian government, there are, we feel that there can be uh, humanitarian problems in, in two, three days. Why? Because first of all, they are not allowing us to in, in, to enter them. We deal with them about humanitarian corridors, but they are still firing on people. They are firing on roads. And uh, of course, the other problem is that, that many chains were broken, as I said, so we cannot deliver food for some uh, citizen residentials. But again, I feel and we see that uh, uh, you know, civilians and people around, they are united, they are helping each other, and I think, I hope that we will not have problem. From the other side, we will ask all international partners and all international bodies and organizations who can help Ukraine, please help us, please. Uh, we have different transport terminals, first of all, in uh, Poland, uh, which can allow us to bring humanitarian aid to Ukraine directly. Let me ask you about your personal background. Uh, I understand you are, the background is from Afghanistan, and I'm assuming you've seen suffering before. You know, this is irony of, of the, the destiny of our family, because my father was my age when that moment Soviet Union attacked Afghanistan. That moment they also called it as you know, as, 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 as not war. They did never call it war, but they never call it occupation. At that moment, they said that it's Russians try to to free Afghanistan people, and you know that this uh, war, which started in '79, it was 10 year, and it they took thousands of life of uh, Soviet soldiers, and of course. Uh, hundreds of thousands of Afghan people. So for me, it's kind of repetition, which I never thought I would see, because my son is my the age uh, is he's 14, and uh, I was eight when um, we left Afghanistan, and I don't want to leave this country. So for me, it's repetition, and again and again, I understand that the the, the heart of this attack, the heart of these problems, is in Kremlin. In, in 1979, it was Afghanistan, now it's Ukraine. So I don't want to leave this moment, and we, all our team, our ministry, all our team, all our government, and all our people of Ukraine, because I feel myself Ukrainian, we will never allow, allow them to, to destroy our cities. We will don't want to leave Ukraine. We, this is our country, and, and I know what is to be immigrant. I don't want to be immigrant again. This is really unbelievable, yeah, unbelievable story. Three generations. Now, we know how the Afghani story ended for the Russians. It wasn't good. Is this yes. what's going to happen to them in Ukraine as well, you think? You know, of course, for me as I'm Ukrainian, I would say that, that, that this, this war will end Russia's empire and Russia influence, but, you know, I think those people who are watching us, they're expecting something from me, something like that. But let's see what's happening in reality. Let's be objective. The army, which is one of the biggest on the uh, continent, they still don't control any kind of regional centers of our country. It's second week of this war. I think they never expected that Ukraine will resist so much. From the other side, we understand that all these efforts that Mr. Putin uh, put all these years, 20 years of his presidency, showing that he's strong, showing that he's proud of his army. Now we see that it's not true. The image of this man is destroyed by Ukrainians. Not because even, even if this war, it doesn't matter how this war will end. For this moment, it's open, it is obvious that he is not strong. They could, could not even predict that the Ukrainians will resist. From the other side, the presidency of Mr. Putin is losing. He is loser because he lost Ukraine as a partner. I just, to remind our uh, people and to remind those who are watching us, just 10 years ago, this country was totally penetrated by Russian interests, Russian army, pro-Russian president, pro-Russian secret service, a lot of Russian uh, uh, businesses were in Ukraine. But now this country hates Mr. Putin and hates Russia. That is the result of his presidency. Again, it doesn't matter what will be the end of this war. 
it is obvious that Mr. Putin lost his influence. He lost this country as partner. And I think for ages that will be a problem because every and each wall in this country will resist and fight with the Russian soldiers in our soil. So for, for me and for our country, it is obvious that, you know, he is not strong. He's actually weak. He's emotional. We understand that he tries to convince all the world that he can uh, fight like uh, United States and other countries, you know, that they try to compare themselves with the United States when they're talking about Iraq or other countries. But compare them. Russia, just in two weeks of war, they're totally isolated. I mean, totally isolated. And we will do more and more to isolate them in infrastructure, in financial markets, in brands, in, in, in transport, and everything. So, and they're losing everything. The inflation in Russia is now, it did record, of, uh, uh, historical record of inflation. Last time Russia um, faced this kind of crisis in 1998. So it is obvious that country is weak. Mr. Putin is not the guy who actually who is wise he's not wise he's emotional he he offended and he is really uh, he, he tries to put his historical view so-called historical view and in, in intentions and conventions on the reality which doesn't work they try to rebuild uh, Soviet Union, which is impossible now. And he did a lot of things to make this impossible. So for this moment, it is obvious that Russia lost. They already lost. Unfortunately, not only Russia, but also those countries who are united let now. Me ask, let me ask you, are you guys and, and President Zelensky going to stay in Kiev no matter what until the end? Yes, this is, you know, uh, it is a little bit ridiculous for us, those who are asking this question. How you can imagine that having this kind of brave army, brave people of Ukraine, how can we leave the capital of our country? And again, I will repeat it, second week of the war against one of the biggest army in the planet. And we are still resist. Still and there is no resistance. We are not surrendered.